It's a magical operation of maximum importance. The initiation of a new aeon. When it becomes necessary to utter a word, the whole planet must be bathed in blood. Tavern's closing. Best be on your way, stranger. What? No mug of ale for a weary traveler from distant Corhagen? I can reward you well, for I am of noble blood. I stay open for no man in these dark times. Things come with the night that no sane man would welcome. And so I left. Cold of heart and soul. Forced to the road and the long, bitter night. Necromancer Mortanius offered me a chance for vengeance, and like a fool, I jumped at his offer without considering the cost. Nothing is free, not even revenge. <laughs> you will have the blood you hunger for. I woke to the pain of a new existence, in a dank womb of darkness and decay. The world had changed to my eyes. 
I had not expected such cruelty from the light, for in the embrace of the sun I could find no comfort, only malice. This would change in time for the worse, along with other things. When rainfall comes, vampires are wise to find shelter from its acidic touch. Hunger and weakness are no bar to vengeance's call. I would find my slayers and send them back whence I came. If we put you down once, we could do it again. What trickery is this? Faces were forever etched upon my memory. I had crossed death for this moment. My mind was empty save for one thought. I would kill. <laughs> From vengeance sated, with my assassins dead, my quest was over. It is not over, Cain. These fools were merely the instruments of your murder, not the cause. Look to their masters. Look to the pillars and gain way to the fortress of the mind. Warning as to what my resurrection would entail. And yet I must confess in my haste I had not sought one. Was his gift a curse? I would seek the pillars for an answer. Pillars of Nosgoth. Even in life, few sights have moved me such as this. I marvel that such beauty should grace our dying world. The Praptor, your madness has shattered our dreams and blinded you. Keep your distance, or I'll send you back to hell, spirit! There is nothing left of me to fear, vampire. I'm only a shadow of my former self. Aru, the balance of the circle of mine. Even so, I can provide the answers you seek. I seek only a cure. There is no cure for death, only release. You must destroy the sorcery, the sorcery that is now poisoning Nosgoth. Only then will you realize peace. The nine of the protectors of hope were sworn to use their powers to preserve our world. Now these pillars have been corrupted by a traitor. My murder at the hands of this beast drove my love Napraptor mad. Now he spreads misery and pain among the circle, crumbling the very foundation of Nosgoth. You must restore balance. You must right the pillars of Nosgoth. I care not for the fate of this world. Then for yourself, Cain. Beware. The unspoken. Nupraptor, with his blind act of vengeance, threatened to destroy all of Nosgoth. Each circle member was bonded to the pillar he served. The pillars reflected the mental state of their servants, and as the minds of the circle degenerated and descended farther into dementia, the pillars crumbled. To restore them, each member of the circle had to die, and the artifact that served as their link to the pillar had to be returned. Only when all the pillars were restored did Ariel claim my curse would end. And so, my hunt for Nupraptor began. Players of distrust and superstition. Most of their babble should be taken with a pinch of salt, since the gypsies often tinker with weary travelers' minds. However, a few gypsies have something interesting to say. Upraptor's keep lay west of Vassabunt. I would seek to cut the cancer from its heart. The wind carried screams from the west. I couldn't help but smile. Someone else in this world was suffering more than I. The gaping moor of Nupraptor's retreat rained upon Nosgoth all his pain and misery. The disease begged to be cleansed. He was renowned through Nosgoth for his tricks of the mind, telepathy and telekinesis. Pilgrims traveled from all across the land seeking the comfort of his lies. I sought not his wisdom, but his life. Intrude upon my sanctuary. Can I not mourn in peace? 
Leave and let my solitude be complete. I came upon one of Nupraptor's serving girls, catatonic with fear, choking out half words through bloodied, broken teeth. Although tempted by hunger, I stayed my hand, allowing her to tell her story. She spoke of her lord, Nupraptor, driven to insanity by the brutal slaying of his beloved Ariel. She spoke of his self-mutilation, sewing his eyes and lips shut to deny the outside world. Fueled by despair and hopelessness, he turned his magic on the circle, infecting their minds with his madness. Nupraptor cared for nothing now, save his pathetic self-pity. Scars such as hers would never heal. Death would only be a mercy. The cretin squandered life and left it seeping on the floor. Such waste was a travesty. Perhaps Nupraptor needed to be taught a lesson as to the value of blood. From the depths of the retreat's eye sockets, I viewed Nosgoth in a different fashion. The glass seemed to warp the image and taint the color. <laughs> As if Nosgoth needed assistance in making its corruption apparent. To fail the circle once more? Leave, Paladin. I do not need your protection. Come, Cain. Come, share my pain. <laughs> So, this was the mentalist Nupraptor, this broken, pathetic little man. Yet crippled as he was, he would not yield without battle. Very well, old fool. If it is death you seek, I will not deny you. The head of her beloved will convince Ariel that I have accomplished my task. I place Nupraptor's head before the pillar of the mind, and watched on as it dissolved into the stone, the pillar of dimension. The pillar accepted its offering. Thus, it was restored. Nopraptor was but the genesis. Forever tainted by his madness, the circle was beyond redemption. For them, absolution lay only in death. In me, they would find their deliverance. But first I had to defeat their shepherd. Malek, defender of the Nine, lay in a keep to the far north, past Vasabunt. It was time for me to test the wrath of the Pillar of Conflict. Death in the Circle breathes life to the Pillars. For every Pillar, there is a token. Only with these shall they be restored. But to reach a warrior, you must first breach his ward. Find Malek and destroy him. Go, word reached us of a strange pestilence that had laid siege to a few remote villages far east. But the rumors failed to prepare us for the horror that was the plague. Worms and maggots fed upon his festering skin. The scent of tainted blood seeped through the wounds upon which they feasted. Pity. Such a waste. Good blood gone bad. Corhagen, my home, the finest city in all of Nosgoth, rich in vanity and conceit. I had no delusions as to the welcome I would receive. Malik's bastion, perched defiantly on the mountaintop, black as night against the blanket of snow. What manner of man would choose a land so harsh and utterly devoid of life? The stench of death clings to you. The interior was as cold and sterile as the snow outside, with empty suits of armor and sharp, cruel steel lining the walls. Powered the machinery. With its destruction, the deafening shrieks of the machines ceased to echo throughout the bastion. It was now time to silence the machine's maker. You try my patience, fledgling. Care to try my blade instead? yearned from lack of contrast. My mouth ached for want of blood. In this cold wasteland, food was scarce, and my hunger grew. They were frozen solid, and dead as they stood, their flesh welded to the cold metal of their armor. A corpse held court on a tattered throne, grinning malignantly at me through blackened teeth. 
It is not often that a man sees his own corpse. It is a sobering experience. But I am far less interested in my own corpse than I am in yours. Prepare yourself, vampire! Perhaps Ariel could offer further guidance. The Lord returns empty-handed. Does the Seraphim elude you? Very well. Go east of Malak's Bastion. The Oracle shall give you aid. High upon the face of these cliffs, hidden amongst the complex network of caves, the underground sanctity of the wise Oracle of Nosgoth lay sleeping. Perhaps it was time to brave the winds and seek out this oracle from the vantage point of the heavens. Vampire, the game grows interesting. But with so many pawns, can you find the true player? Hidden amidst the many obscure artifacts in that museum, I discovered an ancient chronicle. This passage caught my eye. It was during these dark times, infested with the plague of the undead, that the Circle brought the Seraphan to existence. Trained to be devoutly loyal to the Circle and the perfect exterminators of the undead scourge, they were led to many victories by the righteous Paladin, Malek, protector of the Pillar of Conflict. They cleansed the vampires with fire and released their souls to more blessed realms. There is no wrath as terrible as that of the righteous. I'd read enough. At once, disgusted and intrigued, I placed the book back down in that museum. Noble one, seeking wisdom? Death has taught you well. Enough philosophy. I seek answers. Answers, indeed. I have them all if you have the questions. And what are the questions for these answers? King Atmar, the only hope to defeat the legions of the Nemesis. King Atmar, paralyzed by his princess's malaise. King Atmar, the useless. Pray, good sir, what are the questions? A fox upon your tricks and babble, old man. Answer me this. Who is Malik, and how can I defeat him? All in time, Sirrah. Yes, time. Unless you master it, it will master you. And now it's time for your answer. Malik, defender of the Nine, and last of the Seraph and Sorcerer Priests, his vanity led to the slaughter of the Circle at the hands of the vampire Vorotor. For his failing, his spirit was fused to a hellish set of magical armor. He has allowed no member of the Circle to fall since. What of this Vorotor? Follow the glow of the Ignis Fatuous to the Termagant Forest. Ignis Fatuous? The Ignis Fatuous lights the path to hell, noble. Your power. Time, okay? Next time. The Black Forest reigned here. Its kingdom rarely invaded by those that live in the light. But it was called home by this mysterious Vorador. Legend told of a time when Vorador defeated Malek of the Seraphan. If such a man did exist, then he could perhaps be the key to defeating the Ward. Strange that Vorador would choose a dwelling so perilous to him. The swamp could only offer a vampire hazard and pain. Vorador's keep was hidden deep within the turbigent forest, nestled among vines and creepers that clung desperately to its dark weathered stone. The luxury with which this Vorador surrounded himself was impressive. His wealth would shame the haughty nobles of my former court. That this vulgar display of fortune remained undisturbed was a testament of fear's dominion over greed. The gauze of their clothing, yet beauty such as theirs delivered only death. 
For these were Voridor's pets, nothing more than beasts, slave to his will and the easy prey he provided. Vampires, all of them, held in thrall by one stronger still. The darkness was soothing, and in the distance, sharp and sweet, came the scent of spilt blood. Vorador's pantry, a vampire's feast. Like cattle awaiting slaughter, men and women dangled from the rusted hooks upon the dungeon walls. Blood and viscera frosted the dirt and stone. The abundance nearly overwhelmed me, for blood is the life. Blood was splattered on every surface, coating the spikes that jutted from the walls and filming the stone floor. The dread and agony of victims past still echoed through the lethal walls. A symphony of terror and agony filled the air. Then, from amidst the cacophony of screaming souls came the perverse laughter of the vampire himself. Amongst Vorido's possessions, I found an ancient chronicle. Long ago, vampires grew in such number so as to capture the attention of the circle. The Order of the Saraphan, or the Angels of Light, as they were called, was instated to counter the menace. Thus, the Vampire Purge began. The tapestries wove a tale of chaos ignited, an orgy of fire and pain. Undead beings with rotted skins caked with sulphur and ash beckoned at me through a burning abyss. Their tortured stares were a testimonial to the price of weakness. Their fate would not find me. Yet blood calls to blood. In the bowels of that black forest I found something worse than hell. A vision of what I was becoming. It's not often I see one of our own, especially one as young and foolish as yourself. Nonetheless, drink. Drink deep and indulge your gift. Gift? <laughs> Vorador thought my curse a blessing. That we were gods. That mortals offered their blood as sacrifice so that we could enjoy our supernatural powers. And somewhere, deep inside my new self, I knew that he was right. That mortal dreams were prayers. Prayers to us, begging us for power. I pondered this as the decadent old fool prattled on about his past. A boorish account of how he defeated Malek of the Seraphim and took his vengeance upon the Circle of Nine for supporting the Seraphim Holy War to exterminate. Malek! on your corpses! After slaughtering six of the sheep, I defeated their pathetic little shepherd, Malak. 
Since then, our kind has not bothered with the cattle, except to feed. And I suggest you do the same. Meddling with the affairs of man can do us no good. Seraphan witch hunts are much too tedious to concern ourselves with. Am I understood, Cain? Good. Take this ring. If you ever need assistance, it will summon you. Despite your youthful arrogance, you amuse me, Cain. It would be such a pity to lose you to the abyss. Now be gone! strengthened my resolve. His power uncontested by mortals, he had fallen to another enemy. Decadence has claimed itself many a great warrior. For I left that place with clear knowledge of what sort of monster I would become if I let my curse consume me and with an ally for the future. A triad congregates at the roof of the world, Cain. A plot to twist the land to shape the world. North is where your vengeance lies. In my travels, I learned much about the legend of Janos Audrin. Here in this quaint pastoral village of Ustenheim, that dark enemy was born. Janos preyed upon its peasants until he was finally hunted down and executed. The poor wretch was warped beyond recognition. To think it was once human. ...that had been spawned by this dark magic. Things half insect and half mammal. Human torsos grafted onto abominations of the flesh. Sick as it was, I couldn't help but admire its creator's ingenuity. If it could be said that a land descended into madness, it would be an accurate account of Dark Eden. A garden of horrors, seeded with sick perversion of nature's design. I knew that this Dark Eden I had trespassed upon would continue to grow until all of Nosgoth was consumed. Magic seethed and shifted. I watched the dome of energy as it expanded, absorbing and recreating, consuming life and leaving behind only a twisted parody. It seemed the magic only preyed on things that were alive and pure, or perhaps it simply decided that I was twisted enough. A tower stood in the distance. From its apex spewed the vortex of energy that shaped the lands below. The surface of the castle belied its interior, for it was far larger inside than out. With the powers the circle had at its disposal, it would have been simple to distort space to accommodate this strange structure. The sorcerer's sanctuary, his laboratory. Inside was all manner of items arcane, pickled bodies, dissected corpses, both man and beast, and metal construct that heaved arcs of energy into the air. I sensed more than one force being manipulated in this place. Strange. Rarely did a sorcerer condescend to work with others. Ah, not one, but three. Dejul the Energist, Bane the Druid, and Anacroth the Alchemist. How considerate of them to hasten my search. So the scourge of the circle has arrived. Fear him not, Bane. He is but a whelp. His soul is ours for the taking. Don't be ridiculous, Malak, to our aid. Ooh. Damn you, alchemist. I had not come this far only to have my quarry escape. Vengeance. Vengeance for my eternity of suffering. Welp! As if you knew what eternity was. Grovel before your true master! Never I you from crotch to gizzard and feed what's left to your brides!
As Vorador clashed against Malik, I gave pursuit to the fleeing wizards, the Jewel and Bane. I danced their dance. When the time came, they would dance upon my sword. His magic is weak! He is an affront to nature itself! It is our duty to purify him! The antler headdress had broken in the fight, but power still resided in its ivory form. The cloak was made from an alloy akin to lead, heavy and malleable, woven into fine links. The energy she controlled was stored in this garment. I found Malik's helmet amongst the scattered remnants of his armor, whole and intact. Vorador had finally laid his old adversary to rest. The helmet of Malak I placed before the Pillar of Conflict. The Pillar accepted its offering. Thus, it was restored. The act had taken on the feel of ritual. Isn't it strange how we must bribe our gods to stay? At the foot of the energy pillar, I set the cloak of Dejul. The Pillar accepted its offering. Thus, it was restored. The antler headdress of the Druid Bane I lay before the nature pillar. The pillar accepted its offering. Thus, it was restored. You must seek Azimuth the Planar at the heart of Avernus. Three instruments await you to aid you in your quest. But first, you must rise, and you must fall, and find your salvation in between. From the heavens, the tears of angels danced around me in a frenzy of fire. Avernus consumed itself before my eyes. The gate of Avernus opened slowly before me, daring me to cross the threshold. Who was I to reject such an invitation? The city was paved in blood and flesh, yet what would have appalled me in life only tempted me in death. Once I would have felt horror, now only hunger remained. Avernus lay in ruins before me. Whatever hand slaughtered its people ravaged the city as well. The beast paused for a moment, drooling in anticipation of the fine meal he saw before him. To his disappointment, he would not find me such easy prey. <laughs> I felt its eyes upon me, eager, hungry, as if it longed to rip my heart out and eat it before me as I died. I laughed as the onslaught began. Perhaps when it was over, it would be the other way around. 
Avernus was a religious autocracy, with the cathedral as its dais of power. Though the city lay in ruins, the cathedral remained untouched. The demons knew better than to bite the hand that feeds them. And Hashak Gix spoke unto the world, and all who heard trembled. Bring me your firstborn, and shed their blood upon the altar of the world, so that I may take nourishment from them. Do this without question, or suffer my wrath for eternity. And its will was done. Above me stood a memory, etched in stained glass. Time fades even legend, and the origin of Soul Reaver has been lost long ago. But its purpose remains, to feed on the souls of any creature it strikes. Kindred, this blade and I. This armor was spawned in the most impure of spirit forges, tempered from the seething agony of tortured souls. The metal exists only partially in the human realm, causing it to fade between tangible and ethereal states. Ah, what's this? I had not even realized the blade and the raiment were here. You wear those trinkets well, Cain. But I do believe that they would look better on me. The matriarch of Avernus, the Lady Azimuth. Her magical planing skills summon demons through runes inscribed in human blood. A ravage Nosgoth together! Have they sent you to stop me? On vampire blood! <laughs> Once her demonic thralls had been dispatched, she fell quickly to my blade. Azimuth's third eye, a gift from the Pillar of Dimensions, allowed the planar sight into other realms. The pillar reclaims its own. It will deliver you in time. Runes litter its metallic surface. Tis with caution that I carry this mysterious device. Before the Dimension Pillar, I lay the Eye of Azimuth. The Pillar accepted its offering. Thus, it was restored. Well done. You have found Mobius's toy. Azimuth, not content with summoning Demonic Thrall, stole the time-streaming device in order to gather creatures from other ages as well. Take care of the device, Cain. It will deliver you in time. The legions of the Nemesis are on the march from the north, crushing all in their path. T'was not too long ago that the Nemesis was known as William the Just, a caring and gentle benefactor of the land. But as his army grew in strength, and he himself grew in power, the veil of tyranny fell, and one kingdom was not enough. So many cities... So many dead. Willendorf will be sure to follow. The nemesis must be stopped, or all shall be lost. How can one stop an army? You must rally the forces of Willendorf. They are the last hope of Nosgoth. The spectre of Ariel led me to Willendorf. If I was to defeat the next member of the circle, I needed to understand his machinations. With this vague advice in mind, I set forth on the road to Willendorf. That one cannot quite accept that which sustains him. You in your death and me in mine. But death cannot reign in a world without life. And soon you will find the quest ahead of you is yours and yours alone. I can assist you no longer. Willendorf, proud defender of the realm with its warrior elite and mighty ruler, King Ottmar. The Lion Throne had once held my allegiance, but Willendorf's days of glory had passed. It was the last bastion against an unruly future.
Mighty Willendorf had sliced open the belly of the earth, reaping a bounty of precious metals and unearthing ancient secrets. Of these secrets, I had heard of a tomb that contained an ancient forefather of King Otmar himself. Within the tomb, a fountain of blood would allow me to cast the most noble of illusions and gain entry to the city of the mighty lion. It would seem that only those of noble lineage were allowed to pass through the illustrious gates of Willendorf Castle, and the enchantment I had cast with my disguise was not enough to fool these soldiers of hope. I would need a stronger illusion to beguile them. The blood of ages flows so sweet. Come, drink from us. Unlike the Mask of Disguise, this spell actually allows me to cast away the guise of death for a time, allowing me to walk among the living undisturbed. The spell also provides a visage of nobility, for there are many who would easily divulge more to those of highborn blood. The Great Library of Willendorf filled with dull tomes of trite accounts by pompous historians about matters that couldn't possibly be of interest to anyone but themselves. The book spoke of the birth of the circle. The circle served the pillars, protectorates to the strange power that gives life to our land. At the unlikely death of a member, the circle remains broken for a time until the pillars can cull a worthy successor. I came upon another book of interest, buried deep amongst the library tomes. It spoke of a small cult that existed in Nosgoth ages past. Wherever they travelled, strange tales of human possession would follow. Little is known of the god they worshipped. The court of King Otmar, shades of my former existence, proud and self-absorbed, surrounded by all the finery of the realm, secure in their ignorance. As I walked among them, I smirked, thinking of the carnage that would befall them at the hands of the legions of the Nemesis, the glorious flames, and the inevitable rape and pillage. Out of my way, peasant! The stench of the fields hangs over you like a pall. The king sees no one. He is in mourning for the princess. He'll be in mourning for his kingdom soon. And he'll mourn for you even sooner if you Ooh. don't get out of my way. And so I won my audience, such as it was, with Otmar. He cared not for the invading armies from the north, only of the plight of his child. A birthday present. To celebrate her birthday, I declared a contest. Whoever created the finest doll in the realm would be granted a royal favor. Hundreds of dolls were brought, but the winner was obvious. Elzevir, the doll maker, created a toy of such beauty that all were captivated by it. And all he would take in payment was a lock of her hair. Soon after, she became like this. A lifeless puppet. Whoever restores her to her former self shall have this kingdom! Thus, my hunt for the Dollmaker began. My daughter. I fear I shall never hear her delicate laugh again. Oh.
Otmar slumped on his throne like a rag doll, his beard matted with tears of his own self-pity. In my court, he would have long since been usurped by one stronger, but in Willendorf, they worshipped him, even in his weakness. I wondered what Willendorf would do when Otmar's death finally arrived. Through whispers of the court, I learned that the army of the last hope, Willendorf's proud militia, was in no condition to fight the invading legions of the nemesis. They were busy scouring the lands to the north in search of the dollmaker and Otmar's daughter. I also learned of a tunnel which would take me rapidly from Willendorf to the suspected area. It was once the most academic of cities, housing some of the most prestigious universities in all of Nosgoth. While I would not weep over lost tomes, I detested the sight of scars left upon the world at the hands of the nemesis. Elzevir, I have come for the soul. So, Otmar sent you to kill me, eh? I can smell him on you. Or is that the stench of the grave? Dollmaker, I have no time for these games. The soul is mine! I earned it! Otmar gave it to me! Then you shall earn it with blood. You shall not have it! Mine! 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 What an odd little man. Now, to find the soul. Elzevir imprisoned the girl's soul in a small fabric doll. The old man's intentions I shall never know. Strange that such a tiny thing, a shred of burlap and silk with a single lock of hair nailed to it, could bring a kingdom to its knees. Small things frequently have enormous consequences. I entered the court with the dollmaker's head in one hand and the doll containing the girl's soul in the other. I placed them both before the king and watched his eyes catch fire. With the doll in their possession, the court sorcerers could restore his daughter's soul. I do not know that I can thank you enough, warrior. My kingdom is but a small price to pay for my daughter's life. Willendorf is yours, if you wish it. It is not your kingdom I desire, but your army, Otmar. I require troops to vanquish the horde that descends upon us from the north. Very well. Courtiers, fetch me my armor and mace. There is war to be waged! The scourge of Nosgoth is upon us, friends. We shall die today as heroes, lest we live tomorrow as slaves. Ready thine arms for Nosgoth! In the distance I saw the Nemesis armies march forward, a black tide that would soon wash over the armies of the Hope. They victor! They came at me in throngs, no fervor as strong as that inspired by a madman. The Nemesis armies were fierce and showed no signs of subsiding. I sated my thirst on warriors of Horde and Hope alike, the dying relinquishing their final moments to give me strength. <laughs> The tide turned with Otmar's death. I watched as the remaining survivors of the armies of hope fled to the safety of the forest. The battle had decided its victor. The fate of Nosgoth now lay in the nemesis' hands. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
At once the battlefield was gone. Where the ground was caked with blood and dirt, there was lush greenery. Where chaos reigned only moments before, this damning calm prevailed. Alas, it seemed I was stranded here. The time-streaming device lay in pieces at my feet. Would you stand idle as vermin destroy your crops? No! Has your house burned? No! Will you allow this evil to continue? No! Will the wickedness end? Yes! Do you believe? Yes! yes! Then take me to your king, so that I can prepare you for the onslaught. So it seemed I was in the land of William the Just. Fifty years before the battle I had just escaped would take place. <laughs> the stronghold of William the Just. It was time for me to pay a visit to he who would become the nemesis and force Nosgoth on its knees. Weapons you provided will see to that. Uh, uh, pray tell, Mobius, what game do you play? None, my lord. I only wish to aid you in vanquishing your foes. The weapons are but a token of my goodwill. And the news you bring, a vampire said to slay me? Where did you come upon such knowledge? It is of no consequence, sire. It was only out of concern for your majesty's life. Perhaps, perhaps. Very well, then. You may leave me now, but should I wish to speak to you... I will know, Your Majesty, and I shall be there in time. Ah, yes, the vampire. Mobius uh, told me you would come. <clears throat> As his guards rushed to save him, William the Just's blood was already renewing my strength, replacing the life his sword had stolen from my veins. The poor fools come to aid their fallen leader. Let us have some amusement. A time-streaming device. Strange. When coincidence seems too convenient, I prefer to call it fate. With William the Just dead, Mobius's plans have been thwarted. His pawn was removed from the game. I found myself once more in the Nosgoth I knew. The carnage from battle was gone. Yet there was something amiss. From the distance, I heard cries, and a breeze from the south carried with it the faint odor of vampire blood. To it seem the folly fell upon my own shoulders. With their sainted King William dared by my hand, the people of the land were consumed by a hunger all their own, for vampire blood. <laughs> As I wandered about more, the shrieking and cheering became more apparent and defined. There was some sort of gathering to the south, for with each cheer, I smelled an outpour of blood.
I make no pretense to justify my killing, yet these vampire hunters would cloak their bloodlust beneath a veil of righteousness. Hypocrites! They would make themselves judge and jury. Very well, then. Let us see how they take to my role as executioner. Until Nosgoth is purged of your kind. I had been betrayed. In my haste, I had not realized it before. That sigil on his forehead, the oracle of Nosgoth, was in fact the time streamer Mobius, and I had followed his advice. How much of my quest was of his design? Willendorf? The battle of the last stand? William the Just? Was this the trap he had fashioned for me? We will send you back to the grave, whence you came, vampire. Ironic. By going back in time and altering the past, you turn William the Just into the Nemesis. I, you have seen my plan, vampire. As I've seen your destiny, the future says, you die. But I am dead. <sighs> As are you. I knew that Mobius's hourglass was the focus of his time-streaming magic. Farewell, sorcerer. The sands of time have ceased to flow for you. Well done, Cain. <laughs> Mobius did so love playing the trickster's part. His guise as the Oracle served his schemes well. Pity with all his plots he failed to plan for you. Come to me, my undead son. Make haste to the pillars. The stage is set for the grand finale. You will have your vengeance. The hourglass of Mobius allowed him to sift through the sands of time, giving him dominion over past and future. You betrayed us, Mortanius. You had Cain killed and turned him into a monster. You set him upon us. It had to be. Nopraptor's insanity poisoned all of our minds. The Circle had failed in its sworn duties. It had to be destroyed. Failed our duties? Idiot! The Circle exists for us. We don't exist for it. Our powers will save or damn Nosgoth at our whim. Stand with us, Mortanius, or die. Then I shall die. <laughs> The circle is to be destroyed. You have to die as well, Necromancer. I admire your cunning, but you will not escape your fate. Nay, I will embrace it, but my death will leave one more to take, Princeling. Finish me! Serve 
No one. Indeed. Such narrow vision. Don't you see? My silencing of Ariel and its calculated repercussions is but the first act in my theater of Grand Guignol, of which you are the tragic hero. Play on, little vampire. Play on. Fay Victus! Anacroth's magic was contained within the metal of the scales and would eventually be released back into the pillar from whence it came. The scales of Anacroth I lay before the pillar of states. The pillar accepted its offering. Thus, it was restored. The death orb of Mortanius had given the necromancer dominion over the grave. I had thought him the last of the circle, and yet he spoke of another. Before the pillar of death, I lay the orb of Mortanius. The pillar accepted its offering. Thus, it was restored. Gone was the hunger, the rage that would entice, and only the sweet, dark serenity of death remained. I am the last pillar, the only survivor of the Circle of Nine. At my whim, the world will be healed or damned. At my whim. Once I embraced my powers, I realized that Vorador was correct. We are gods. Dark gods. And it is our duty to thin the herd. <laughs> In his life, he was unknown, a petty noble. In death, he was unknown. Yet by choosing oblivion, he restored balance to the land. Shades cast no shadows.